Hello. Good afternoon, friends. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully you can hear me okay. And I hope you're having a good afternoon and a good day so far. We're back Tuesday afternoon. My name is Genevieve Coe, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Markham, Ontario. I've been a demonstrator for over 14 years, and it all started because somebody showed me how easy it was to create with stamps, ink, and paper. And uh, it took me a little while, but then I was hooked. Once I was hooked, uh, there was no turning back, and I found that the best part about creating with the Stampin' Up! products is getting to share it with people. So, um, so exciting, the many people I've met over the years. And so Tuesday at 2 came about just so that I could um, share what I've been creating with you, share some inspiration with you, connect with you. And uh, it worked out um, better that uh, I could do it on this Facebook Live so that anybody across Canada or really around the world can enjoy the inspiration too. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I love it when you guys comment and say hello because it makes it more fun and we can interact. Great, thank you, Debbie, I'm doing great, great. I love to see your comments. I always like to look at the comments and I pick a random winner just to receive a little happy mail from me. So don't be shy, definitely comment, let me know uh, where you're from and whether you've ever paper crafted before. Uh, for those of you that join in regularly, feel free to share my video so that others can gain some inspiration and uh, happy crafting. So welcome, welcome. I'm doing great. I uh, had a great afternoon just playing around in my stamp room a little bit and uh, celebrating uh, one of the achievements of my team members and just uh yeah just fuddling around down here so um pretty relaxed pretty happy yes i can't believe it's already tuesday happy march everybody we are the first day of march and uh i march always makes me think it's just around the corner just hang in a little longer spring is coming <laughs> So I'm so glad it's March. Um, it's still cold and gray here. And uh, I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks, we'll see a little more sunshine. Maybe the snow will melt and uh, we'll get some we'll get some nice weather. Hi, Elizabeth. Oh, very exciting. I'm glad you can join me live today. OK, so lots of things going on. Oh, I didn't. I don't think I ran up to my printer to get everything. Um, but there's lots of things on 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 the excitement on the news today. So let me go through as much as I can remember. Hi, Layla. Oh, yes. I feel like Layla, I've seen you like three days in a row, maybe. Because I saw you Saturday for the STAM camp. And then, well, maybe I didn't see you Sunday. Can't remember if I saw you Sunday. And then Monday, we had technique class. And then we get to see you today. Oh, I guess Sunday, I would have seen you on Sunday story time. It's a little thing I do with my team. So it's nice to connect too. So yay. It's like we're good friends. We are good friends. Okay, so announcements. March the 1st. The first of every new month means that it is the last day to RSVP for that month's classes. Okay, so this month uh, in March, I've got a Stampin' Bingo going on. I've got a Flowering Rain Boots class. Do I have some of the card samples here to show you? I'll try and grab them later if I have them because it's the last chance to register. Um, I think the flowering rain boot stamp set might be unavailable for the moment, but um, hopefully it'll come back fairly soon. Uh, but I know many of you already have that stamp set and the class does not include the stamp set. So you don't have to worry if you already own it, bought it earlier on, good move, always good to buy early. Uh, you can still sign up for that flowering rain boots class because you won't the stamp set doesn't come with it. It's all the pre-cut pieces and some embellishments and you'll get to make eight cards. So they're all springy colors. Very happy, very happy that I that I was very happy with those cards. Just the spring colors made me happy. Um, okay, and then anything else? Oh yes, just a reminder, there is going to be a change to my Sweet and Simple class. For a very long time, I've had a monthly Sweet and Simple class where um, you would pay $25. And um, well, in the BC days, you'd come to the church basement, stamp your four cards. Since COVID, I've been doing it over Zoom. 
Um, but I decided to make a change. So starting this month, my Sweet and Simple class is now going to be free for everybody to enjoy. So instead of doing it on Zoom, I am going to do it. Um, I'm going to be doing it live right here in my Facebook page. And I will demonstrate all four of the cards. Um, and that will be my Sweet and Simple class. Okay, and they'll all focus probably around one stamp set. And then after the class, which is going to be on Facebook Live, oh, I didn't tell you the date, the second Thursday of each month at 5 p.m. Okay, so it can be like live at five, sweet and simple at five. I don't know what we're going to call it yet. It's my sweet and simple class. Second Thursday, 5 p.m., hop onto my Facebook page, watch me make the four cards. And then if you want, you can just order them. You can say, yes, I want that make and take kit. Cut those four cards for me. And then I will uh, send those out to you, $25, free shipping. And uh, you can just, I'll email you or you can just come back to the page and watch the video recording and make the cards. Okay, so that's how my sweet and simple class is changing because I really want more people to be able to enjoy crafting with me. And it's kind of hard when um, everything's on Zoom and you know, sometimes people miss the RSVP deadline or um, maybe somebody who's never crafted before wouldn't feel comfortable paying $25 when they don't know what they're going to get. So anyway, I just tried to think of different ways to make crafting more accessible um, for you, but also for your friends who have never crafted before. But same as my sweet and simple before, if you decide to order the, that make and take packet and one of your friends who's never come out to my classes before also orders a packet you'll both get a double set so then you'll get eight cards for only $25 and you'll know in advance what you're getting because I'll have demonstrated it on the Facebook live on the second Thursday of each month at 5 p.m. okay so tell me in the comments what you think of that idea whether you're going to join me whether you're going to invite your friends to join me you guys can I kind of picked that time because I thought for the people that are working hopefully they'll just be you know arriving home and can just put their feet up and enjoy a little crafting inspiration. Okay, but it's not too late where people are trying to get kids to bed or too tired or whatever. Okay, so that's my plan. We'll give it a try. Let me know in the comments what you think, but I'm super excited about the idea to be able to share my sweet and simple class freely with everybody. And that way, if you want the card making pieces, um, I'll have a link at my Facebook Live on the description so that you know how to order the card packets. The card packet orders need to come in by the end of the weekend. Okay, so if I do the, I'll always do the class on the Thursday, as long as you place the order by the Sunday, then I'll know to cut and I'll be able to send them out. Okay, so there's a change there, but I think it's a good change. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Elizabeth's like, what about the people who want to stamp along? I know. I thought about that and I think that's actually better. So, but we'll see. The issue is me, right? The issue is me being organized enough to have like designed the cards ahead of time. Cause then I would have to cut twice for the ones that watch it and then want the kit, right? I, I thought about this. So, unless I cut a set amount in the beginning for the people that ordered it ahead without even who haven't even like, they don't know what they're getting yet. Although I could, like I, I'm already telling you, from March, I'm doing the ladybug bundle. I already know that. Um, but to have it ready by the 10th, they'd really have to order it way the month before if I'm shipping it out, right? Like it's, it, I've learned that shipping is, is a whole thing, right? Like it could take two weeks to get there, which means I have to design the cards. I don't mind working a month ahead, but then... I don't know. Maybe you can help me think of a solution because I thought it would be awesome if you could stamp along with me. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll keep thinking about it, but this is the way I'm doing it for now is that you'll order it um, the day of or I mean, it's fine. I can put it on the order form because my reg class registration form Yes, Maureen is saying the video is always there. So you'll always be able to stamp with it after. And I'll send the pictures of the cards. It's easy for me to um, email the cards. And uh, you, you'll have the pictures when you get the packet. So um, <laughs> 
uh, okay, so that that's the plan with that. I'll keep thinking about it. And uh, da, 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 da. Um, what else? Okay, scrapbooking class. Scrapbooking class is a new thing I'm doing um, because I love preserving my memories. I love having the photographs. I take so many pictures on my phone. Um, how many of you um, take pictures on your phone and then like, don't do anything with them. And, you know, Google Photos might show it to you here and there, but then it's almost like, well, why did I take that picture again? So that's why I've been loving and enjoying scrapbooking so much. And I thought, you know what? Once again, I hate doing it by myself. It's way more fun to do it with others. And I would love to um, have you guys join me to <laughs> Maureen's like guilty that's me I know you take tons of photos of your grandbabies Maureen wouldn't it be wonderful to have it in an album so that you can show them show them these are the pictures I took of you I remember when you were little and you loved playing with this like my kids love still my kids are so grown now they're like teenagers adults they still like looking through the scrapbook and um, I probably wouldn't remember all those little details but because they were written down they remember. So I've started a monthly scrapbooking class. Um, let me show you, let me show you a sneak peek of March's. Do I have? Yeah. So let me grab that for you. Um, we're going to be using the artfully layered suite. So I will um, prepare everything so that you can kind of create the layout. So each class you'll get a 12 by 12 layout. Where does, I think it's like this. Beep, sneak peek and um, you'll get that and what else will you get you'll get like a whole bunch of product to finish the 12 the two lay the two pages but you'll also have extras so that you can create more coordinating pages and um, also included when you register for that besides the product besides the pre-cut pieces besides the instructional tutorial step-by-step uh, -step tutorial on how to make that layout and the photographs. You'll also get a two-hour crop time over Zoom so that you can actually do it. <laughs> Put your pictures in, do the journaling, finish the little um, layout, make more layouts. Um, we did our first one in February. It was a great time. It almost didn't even feel like we were really online. Like, And it's even better than going to a crop because all my stuff was here. So um, I'd encourage you to try it out. You can try it out for March. Today is the last day to register for March classes, but for the scrapbooking, I have a subscriber option. So normally it's $48, but if you decide to become a subscriber, it'll only be $45 and you get the option of um, continuing for seven consecutive months and you will get a $25 shopping spree from me as a thank you. Okay, so those are some of the things going on. Those are some reminders. I do want to dive into the cards and the stamping because normally I only do one project, but I'm going to do two today because I couldn't help myself. Very exciting. So let me flip this over here and we'll get started. I have more announcements to make. If you guys are on my newsletter list, you will have seen that there's lots of promotions going on in March or new products coming out. So if you want to make sure you're on my newsletter list or make sure to sign up for any upcoming classes, um, see my blog, just go to this link here, linktree slash stampin' for fun. It's sort of an all-in-one link. Everything's there so that you can just click what you want. If you want to head to my online store, if you want to sign up for upcoming classes, if you want to join my Team Stick Stampers, the links are all there. Okay, so uh, let's get started with a few things. One of the things, well, some, hmm. okay, my flyer's upstairs, but I want to show you some new products that just went live today. Let me see if I can get them all here. It literally just came back to me because our team get together we are using this bundle for our team get together here's a few pieces of the gorgeous designer series paper here's the stamp set here's the dies okay I can't remember what they're even calling it waves of inspiration ocean waves I feel like 
Okay, there's labels, there's these awesome detailed waves dies. Okay, and then the paper, the paper, the gems. Look at these gems and the foil. Uh, let me see if I can. There's not too much of the paper left. I've already gone through a whole pack. Now that it's live, I can order more, more of it. As a demonstrator, I was kind of limited on the pre-order. Okay, so, but I did get it in advance so that I could get my team some make and takes cut for them. Okay, so this is now live for every, anybody to purchase. As usual with uh, the changes Stampin' Up! has made, you can get what you can get while it's available. Okay, once it sells out, the number gets turned off and you're not able to purchase it anymore. But I did want to let you know that this is now available for purchase. And if you tuned in for my Facebook party last week, you'll have seen that I used some of this gorgeous paper in one of the cards. Sorry, I need my glasses to see the comments. I feel like Debbie just said something. Oh, I know the paper is so beautiful. So that I used it last week in the Facebook Live. So we're not going to use that today. But I was eyeing this foil paper, so I think we are going to use that today. And it's a new month, so I had to pick a new product of the month that I was going to focus on all week. And I decided to pick this vellum paper. Okay, so this is going to be our product of the month. It's called the Vellum Layering Designs. Um, and why did I pick it? Because when I bought it, I was so excited to see patterned vellum paper. And I bought it. And I think I used it like once. And I'm like, this will not do. I loved it. I bought it. We must use it. And so that's why I decided to focus on it this month so that I could challenge myself to find ways to use this paper. So let me show you. It's actually part of the um, Artfully Layered Suite. So for those of you who have catalogs, um, you're going to want to check it out. My catalog is so beat up here. <laughs> Okay, so it's part of this artfully composed suite and uh, my retreat this weekend will be using these products, but I, I never ended up actually using this paper. We're using all these other things in our make and takes and everything, but not this, this vellum. So I'm super excited to play around with it. You get 12 sheets for each of three designs. Um, and the reason why it's for, let me, I'm just going to show you because there's the black design and the white design. Okay, so I just want to show you. Okay, so see, you'll have like, there's this like text, text one with white, and then you have the exact same design, but with black. Okay, so, and then there's like this map one. You can see I did use a bit of that. You've got it in white. Hang on. And then you've also got it in black. Okay, so, and I think there's one more design. Yeah, here. It's this kind of, it looks like almost like words in an encyclopedia. So you've got that in white and you've got it in black. So we're going to play around with this paper all this month. So you're not going to want to miss every Tuesday at 2 on my Facebook page. I'll be creating something. And uh, we'll all find out together what I'm going to create because I'm challenging myself this month to use this paper. Okay, so let's get started. So that's our product for the month, but I couldn't take my eyes off the foil. So we are going to use that. Let me take a piece of it out. We'll cut the pieces. Oh, let me show you the different colors in the foil so that you can be aware. There's sort of like this color, almost like a turquoisey, And there's one that's sort of silvery. And then there's one that's like a deep blue, like a, a royal sapphire kind of blue. Okay, but I'm going to use the this turquoisey one here. It's so shiny that like even when your finger touches it, you feel bad because you've just put a little finger mark on it. Okay, so we'll use this. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the, the scripty sort of... Um, font that's on this paper. I'm going to go with the white design. So when I thought about using the paper, I really started with this because I decided this was going to be the product of the month. And I'm like, okay, what can I use this with? So one of the features of vellum is that it is like a little transparent, right? And so that's why I grabbed the foil because 
if I used this foil, like the whole time I would feel horrible about covering anything of it because it's so beautiful and shiny. So I'm like, aha, I'm not really covering it if I'm covering it with something that's a bit transparent and translucent. So this way, some of the color can still show through and it almost colors it so that the the paper almost becomes another color when you layer it on top of something like this foil paper. Okay, so let's see, what else do we need? Um, so I was looking at that paper and I was like, what would go with this foil here? So I think this uh, um, Bermuda Bay color, do you guys remember, was it a month ago where I had a, I was sleep talking and I'm, I told my son, don't leave, you have to stay for the Bermuda Bay coloring contest. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is where I'm using the Bermuda Bay. <laughs> it's not a color that I use often. Those of you who watch me regularly, you're going to be in shock. I'm not using pink. I'm not using subtles colors. <laughs> it's like this card is not really my style, but it's so it was so fun to make. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, cut this. This is going to be our card base. So I'm taking an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. I'm going to cut it in half at five and a half. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. Okay. okay, so that's easy. That's just a regular card base. Okay. I'm glad you think it's a great product of the month to have. It's the same thing, right? You guys know if you buy stuff, it's like, how do I use the stuff? Why did I buy that? All I knew was I was very excited to buy that fellow and then I didn't use it very much. So, um, okay, so let's just use our bone fold to burnish that a bit. Okay, and so just so you know my thinking process, I was like, okay, I'm gonna layer this on top. So I'll cut it the normal size, um, four by five and a quarter. So that's what I did. So we'll do that here, four by five and a quarter. But then when I looked at it again, I was like, hmm, oh, Jackie loves this color. Are you the one, Jackie, where it's like green, your green is my pink, or, you know, like, uh, I love pink. So I know some people have different favorites. So, but when I held it like this, I was like, mm, I'm not, not sure, right? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to put another border, a really fine border around it. And I'm going to do that in basic white. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so I'm actually going to make it just like an eighth of an inch wider. Oh, Sarah is a green girl too. Okay, so then this is this is all good for you. So if I know that it was five and a quarter, but I just want it like an eighth of an inch, right? So I'm gonna go uh, three eighths, five and three eighths. Those of you who are stamping along with me, and then uh, this is four inches, so I'm gonna go four and one eighth. Okay, so I'm just creating a mat. Hopefully, I did it right that it's just going to have the tiniest one eighth of an inch border around it. Oh, Jackie's a blue lady. Okay. Sarah's green. Jackie's blue. Okay. And I'm pink. We all know that. Okay. Okay. So then I've got this um, even one eighth of an inch border all around. Do you see how it makes the foil paper pop a little bit more? Okay. I, I think putting that white is better than having it like that. Don't you agree? Okay. So, don't be afraid when you're creating if you don't know where you're going yet. I have gotten very comfortable with that, even though I've got the kind of personality where I definitely, like if I was traveling, I would want to know where my destination is. But for some reason, paper crafting allows me to be a little less uh, um, conscious about that, self-conscious about that. I just played around. I was like, okay, I'll put this layer on. And then I wasn't really happy with that. So then I just decided to make this really fine border. I very rarely do eighths of an inch because I actually find it a bit tricky to glue down. So, but anyway, just because I rarely do it doesn't mean we can't do it today. So let's, let's try our best and stick this down. Okay. So I'm doing my best. I've never been really talented with visual perceptual skills. Okay. 
And then, okay, Debbie's like me, settles girl. She likes the settles family like I do, and she likes pink. Okay. Yeah, the extra border really works, right, Sharon? It's just, yeah. And it's not hard to do when you have like a, a good paper trimmer like the Stampin' stamp and Trimmer because on the Stampin' Trimmer, the measurements are like actually to the 16th. I could have even made it more narrow, but anyway, there's there's good markings on that trimmer, so it makes it makes it easy to cut. Whereas my industrial paper cutter, when I'm cutting for classes, it is hard to do the eighth of an inch, just the way the measurements are. Okay, so this one, then I thought, well, I don't want to cover it all up. Okay, so I'm going to do the regular quarter inch border with this. So we'll do three and three quarters by five inches, I believe. Three and three quarters by five. Let's see. Okay, see how that comes together? Okay, now we're going to go a little bit crazy here. Because I got to this part of making the card and I was like, well, now what? I don't want to cover too much of it up because I think it's already awesome. And I thought it would be too plain. Like I thought, oh, I could just put a sentiment in the middle and that'll be fine. But then I remembered these dies that I have. And I'm like, oh, maybe that is my solution. Let me find the dies. Where did I put them? Here. Okay. So here are the dies. Okay. So I grabbed this set because I like it. I like the large bold fonts. And then I was, I grabbed the set first because i that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just put a sentiment here and something bold and, you know, and then, then when I w went to grab this set, I remembered that there's coordinating dies with this set. Oh, that would have been a good idea, Louise, to use the word dies. And I grabbed this <laughs> and I was like, maybe I can do something with this. So the first thing I did was to cut it, cut it right so that i could see what what happens what it looks like okay so let's do that with my cut and emboss machine now i did find it a little tricky to cut this die because it's so long it's meant to create slim line cards now the card i'm making is not a slim line card it's one of our regular size cards okay Okay, and then pop that on there. Okay, so I found it tricky because the thing is when you're using the cut and emboss machine, I'll explain what happens here. When you put these platforms on, okay, every platform that you need must be underneath the die that you're trying to cut. So because this is such a long die, I cannot make any mistake with my cutting plates. Like I can't, like I can't have this hanging off like this. I don't know if you can see. See how it's hanging off? Because this end part will not cut. Okay, so I have to make sure the whole thing is on there. I have to make sure the die is completely on the paper. Okay, I have to make sure that this cutting plate covers the whole die. And because it's so long, like it's just, it's really easy to miss. That's why I want to point it out. It's really easy to, to just not get it in the right spot. And then I found it a little tricky to get this to catch, but I think it's caught now. And it's going to make all these creaking sounds and that's just normal. So I hope all the plates are in good alignment. And we're just going to press it through. Oh my gosh, that's like an arm workout right there. Okay. And so let me, let me move this out of the way. Okay. And so look what it cuts. Okay. Can you see? That's how it cuts. So every single one of these pieces is an individual piece. And then you will also have the frame, the empty piece. Okay. I think it's okay to just take this out. Okay. 
Okay, so you get this piece, which I'm not going to use right now. And then I've got all these pieces. Okay, so these I am going to use. Okay, so actually I'm not going to stick that on yet. So I'm starting at the top because I like this top piece that has a flat, flat section on it. And then I am going to, because this is a white thing and this is vellum and way, it's very hard to see. So I'm just going to grab my silicon mat and then hopefully you can see better. So what I'm trying to do is line up this top and line up this side. Okay, and I'm going to lay it like that. Oh, I forgot, I wanted to use my adhesive sheets. That would have been great because then these all would have been stickers and we could have just stuck it down. But now we're gonna have to use glue because I forgot to use the adhesive sheets. Okay, so tell me what you think. See what I mean? This is like geometric is not my normal go-to, but that's the fun thing about paper crafting. You can change it up sometimes, even though I'm mostly a pinky, Suttles family kind of girl, I can change it up. I can be geometric, funky girl today. <laughs> okay, see that? So I really should, wish I had done my adhesive sheets because then these would already be stuck down, but I'm just trying to show you. Okay, so let's let's see if we can stick these down here. Hopefully my, I know I'm running low on this glue. Okay, let's see. If we can just put a tiny bit on. Okay, this glue is very sticky. Okay. That's why I'm just putting a tiny bit. Jennifer's like, I'm not a geometric girl. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. There's all these kind of different styles. That's why I really surprised myself <clears throat> doing this. But sometimes it's fun to do something different, right? Okay. So I'm just going to keep going here. Oh, yes, the liquid glue is... I mean, every adhesive has their purpose, right? It's good for different purposes. Okay. And we'll do this one. I mean, I'm trying my best to kind of make the spacing even. I don't know if I'm really doing a good job, but the card's handmade. It's okay. I don't know why I went all wild with this geometric thing. I think the wildness came from this paper. Like if this foil is so like dramatic that I felt I had to do dramatic things on my card. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yeah, it totally kind of does look like a tree, right? Okay. A little bit of this glue, not tons. There we go. I don't know. Should we put another one? We could probably sneak one more in there. I think which is slightly different than what I made before, but it's fine. Every time we make a card, it can be different. That's okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too much coming out here. Well, very exciting. Okay. Oh, we didn't even need the whole layer. Anyway, that's why we're using our silicon mat so that I don't get it on my paper. Okay. Okay, so I know this part is hanging off. No problem. That's not a problem. Because we're going to flip this over. 
Okay, and we're just gonna snip it off. Oh, you can see how I wasn't very aligned here. Okay, that's okay. Um, where's our scissors? Okay, so you just flip it to the other side and then you can snip these off. We don't need these. Okay. I'm just snipping it so that it lines up with the with the paper. Okay. So then we can pop this on here. So same thing because of the vellum and you kind of see through, I'm going to put the adhesive where I know it's going to get hidden. So let's do that. Try not to put too much because I don't want it to bleed out if I can help it. Okay. Oh, you know what? I put a little bit here because I am going to be covering this part up with the sentiment. Okay. So then, and here's the trick. I'm just trying to make it even. We'll do our best. Okay, so that's that. Now we're just gonna do our sentiment and that's it for that card. But I'm already telling you, I'm gonna do something with this piece. We're not gonna let this piece go to waste. So it's almost like when you use this die, you end up with like two, you could easily make two cards because of the pieces that you get from it. Okay, so I'm gonna use some uh, basic white. And I'm going to cut it, I think, at one and a half. Okay, one and a half inches. And let's try three and a quarter. Okay, let's see whether that works. I'm looking at this, you are one of a kind. I think that should be okay. So let's grab that. We're going to need, I used my uh, G block. Is this G? H, sorry, H block. Okay, trying to make it as straight as possible. Okay. And then I think it would be awesome, but I decide not to take the time for it, is to do it in black embossing powder because that looks pretty, pretty cool and funky, but I'm just gonna do it with the black, but I think it would, probably look better with the black embossing powder because I then it would kind of be shiny almost like vinyl and it would kind of go with the whole the whole geometric look but keep it simple I'm just gonna but that's why I'm pressing really hard because I want it to be black black like I want it to be a little bit dramatic on the white it's hard when it's a skinny white piece of paper and my aging eyes are like, okay, so it's a little bit crooked, but not too bad. Okay, and then bam, we're just gonna put it right on here. Before I stick it on here, I'm just gonna give it, see, these are all the wild things that I don't often do, but the geometric, the foil paper was making me a little wild. Um, for those of you guys who have never seen this before, you can create splatters. So let me show you what it looks like without anything. So it's just black on white. And then um, I just take my, I just took my Bermuda Bay stamp and write marker and I'm just flicking the lid, flicking, flicking the brush tip inside the lid. Okay, and then I'll hold this up so you can see. So it gives it kind of a grunge look, kind of like a splatter, fun look. Okay, and then we'll just stick that right on there. We could do it with dimensionals or flat. It's totally up to you, I'll do it flat. Okay, so that's our card for today. We're gonna dress it up with, of course, some of the new um, Waves Basic Jewels because there are several shades of blue in these jewels. Who's my blue person? Jackie, all these different color of blue rhinestones. 
I'm going to go with this one. Okay, so what do you guys think? Totally outside my normal wheelhouse, but kind of interesting and fun, right? And a, and a way to kind of sh use that vellum paper without it being like it's the vellum gives it just a subtle interest in the background. Okay, so that is card number one that we're doing today. And normally I just make one card, um, but I could not, I could not let this piece go to waste. So we're going to make something with this piece just really fast and easy. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with slimline cards, I'm not actually too familiar with them either, but this die is encouraging me to use it. Um, yeah, it's really different, right? But sometimes it's good to be different. Forces you out of your comfort zone. And the other thing is, here's the problem with all the cards I make, many of the cards I make, not all of them, but many, is they are totally wonderfully appropriate to give to girls, to women, to my besties, you know. And then my two sons, my husband, you know, maybe our pastors at our church, like, sorry, no card for you. I don't have any in my stash that are appropriate for men or masculine. So, I mean, I don't know whether Bermuda Bay would work, but hey, it doesn't have flowers and glittery bows on it. Okay, I did put a couple of rhinestones, but you know, I feel like I could give this to my son um, and he wouldn't be totally horrified. So um, that's the good thing about kind of stepping outside the comfort zone a bit. Okay, let's do this one really fast. So uh, slimline this die, I'm gonna tell you what measurement you need if you want to make a slimline card. So I'm using the basic white thick and you're gonna need it, um, your paper cut at eight and a half inches. So you don't have to do anything along here because this is already eight and a half. And then you're gonna cut it at seven inches. Okay, so good thing our trimmer has this extension arm. We're gonna pop it out and go to seven inches. Okay, so eight and a half by seven. And then um, and then at three and a half. Score at three and a half. Okay. So three and a half is the half of the seven. So then you end up with this being your card base. And the cool thing is that Stampin' Up in the mini catalog sells the slimline envelopes so we'll take one out because we're going to need it for our card they come in different colors in the pack we get a variety pack of colors but see how the the card will fit really nicely in the envelope now okay so let's do that let's move uh no we're still going to need our trimmers so i think the easiest way to use this in my opinion because i was like oh let me just quick use this piece because i'll say i'll make a card with it later and i'll forget okay you can either do it straight like this onto cardstock and let the color uh, peek through like that, or you could use some designer series paper at the back. Now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> I actually like it with the white. But anyway, I'll just make it the way that I had made it before because I thought, perfect, some designer series paper can poke through. I'm using this designer series paper from the Pattern Party Pack. This designer series paper is a freebie just for, uh, you can get them with your Stampin' Rewards. And so you can get Stampin' Rewards either by shopping, as long as your order is $200 or more, you can get Stampin' Rewards by hosting a party. You can get Stampin' Rewards by being a club member with me. So lots of ways to get that pattern party paper. And then uh, what I did is I kind of measured this piece. So it's measuring like three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. Okay, so I just went a little titch below because I didn't want it to peek outside of this border. So if I know that it's three and a quarter inches, then I kind of did it at like three and one eighth inch. And instead of eight and a quarter, I kind of did eight and one eighth of an inch. Okay, I'm going to use the... Um, yeah, because I thought that was a bit too busy, <laughs> too exciting. So, 
And it's funny when I did this, my very first thought when I made, when I went like this, it reminded me of, um, oh no, um, that ride at Disney World that everyone runs to first thing, not Spaceship Earth, the other one. <laughs> anyway, somebody will tell me in the comments. See, that's how I haven't been to Disney World in like three years and I've forgotten the name of one of our favorite rides. Terrible, terrible. What is this world coming to? <laughs> terrible. Okay, not not Spaceship Earth. It's in, it's in Tomorrowland, Disney World. Ah, that's going to bug me. Anyway, doesn't it have that cool spacey kind of look? <laughs> okay, so let's. Uh... Okay. So I'm just again putting little, little drops here just to kind of adhere it to the DSP. Ah, it's going to bug me the name of that Disney World ride. Someone put me out of my misery. Tell me the name of the Disney World ride. <laughs> Space Mountain. Thank you, Allison. You saved me. Because <laughs> seriously, that would bug me all day. Yes. So when you go into Space Mountain to ride it, like, you know, there's a whole space theme and yeah. Okay, I think we did okay there. Okay, so that's an easy way to use that um, die. And then we'll just pop it onto our card front for our slim line card. So like one die, two cards. And I'm acting as though these dies are the product of the month, but they're not. The vellum paper is the product of the month. So you will see the vellum paper in action again next week. Probably not these dies, but I have been trying to remind you guys. Well, I didn't go very even here, but try to remind you guys, try to buy things when they're in stock, okay? <laughs> because when they're not in stock, you can't buy them. It's not like before where you could just buy them and like wait till it came back in stock and Stampin' Up! would send it to you. It's not like that anymore. So I think these dies are still currently available, these slimline ones. Okay. Okay, so let's finish it off. Um, I decided to just grab these uh, tailor-made tag dies and a little bit of the basic white cardstock. Do I have any of that basic white cardstock here? Let's see. And... I can stamp it first. I don't know. Sometimes I stamp it first and then die cut it with the tags, or I can cut the tag first and then die cut it. Okay, and then we're just going to use this uh, tag die and we'll cut it out. Okay, so let me do that. So I'm going to close this up. And we'll cut it out. So we need our platforms. So we get, sorry, get our platform back. We'll pop this on here. And try to Make it as straight as we can. I should probably put a piece of post-it there to make sure it doesn't shift. And then we'll roll it through. There we go. Okay, so these tag, what are they called? Tailor-made tag dies. They come in two different designs. There we go. 
Okay, and then there's different sizes here. Let me show you, sorry. Okay, so can you see there's like ones with sort of a straight edge in all different sizes, and then there's ones with like a, a scallopy sort of edge top. Okay, so these are pretty handy for making labels and little tags. Okay, so we've got our little tag here. Get that out of the way and we can just finish up our card, right? We'll just stick that on there. Maybe I'll put some dimensionals behind. And that's fast card number two today, bonus card. <laughs> Okay, and to go with the black, I decided this was the ribbon I was looking for last week. It's back now, my glittered black organdy ribbon. I just tied a knot with it. And then we'll pop that on with a glue dot. And so that's a really simple geometric card. Once again, also, I feel like you could make it, you know, it's kind of acceptable as a masculine card as well. Okay, so I'll stick that on. And then uh, why not put some of those fancy wave basic jewels on. What color should I do? Maybe I'll do this color. They're all blue. It's just kind of which blue do I want to use? Okay, so those, who was <laughs> what happened? I put this to see, don't worry, I haven't been taken over by aliens. Don't be alarmed. Like, who is this person stamping? She's not using pink. She put her sentiment on an angle. Who is this person? Okay, so, but there you go. Sometimes you can go crazy outside the box. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'll show you again our product of the month that vellum paper there gives a subtle design but also i got to showcase these slim line guys and how different ways you can use them so let me flip this around so that i can say goodbye um was there anything else i wanted to show you guys before i move my camera um i can show you a sneak peek of next month's technique cards because today's the last day to sign up for that we're doing kind of different like pop, pop kind of cards. So here's a little sneak peek. Okay, so if you want to sign up for any classes, today is the last day. Where is the link? I'll put it in the description later once I update the video, but it's there. And you can also get excited for March the 10th because that's when I'll be doing my uh, Facebook Live with the four cards for Sweet and Simple too. It's good to be different. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me just bring this back. And thank you so much for joining me today. And we will catch you again. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we have some winners. Okay, so let me think if I, my memory can. Okay, so from my Facebook party last week, we have two door prize winners, Carmen M, Carmen McIntyre, and Philippa. Philippa. Okay, so you guys are going to be each getting a blends marker. And then uh, for commenting last week, I'm supposed to have two winners, but I only had time to go through one, so I'll get the other one. Um, oh, Carmen, I just saw you log on. You just missed it. You missed the announcement that you won the door prize from my Facebook party last week. And then uh, Jen, Jen Sage was the commenting winner from last week too. Okay, so there's some happy mail going out to you guys. Those of you who are watching today or watching the replay, please comment. Um, because I love to read your comments and it enters you for a little happy mail from me. And feel free to share the video so others know what's happening in the Stampin' for Fun world. I love sharing with you. I love sharing stamping and uh, thanks for joining the journey with me. Have a great week. Bye.